Okay, in the last video I talked about how we have a problem with taking the divergence of a field at a point where that field blows up or goes to infinity. And I said we needed a mathy trick to solve that problem. Well, the mathy tool we're gonna use is called the Dirac Delta function. And that is what this lecture is about. Okay, so let's just review our problem uh, that we had at the last uh, end of the last lecture. Okay, so if we defined an electric field that happened to look like the electric field of a point charge, okay, so it was like it goes like 1 over r squared. Okay, so this is a point charge at the origin. And we tried to calculate the divergence of that field. Okay, we found that it was zero everywhere where r is not equal to zero. But when we got to the point charge, we got an answer that didn't make any sense, okay? And I wanna know, this is a particular electric field. There are other electric fields where it doesn't blow up at a point, okay? Where we could easily calculate the divergent. Okay, so how are we gonna solve this? We're gonna solve this using uh, our Dirac delta function. So what the heck is that? Okay, so I'm gonna draw a little uh, coordinate system here. Two dimensional. And this is our, we're gonna draw a funky uh, function that if you can imagine, it goes to infinity where x goes to zero. And it's really uh, impossible to draw, but you can get a representation of it. Okay, and this function has special properties, okay? it's equal to zero in this particular case if x uh, is not equal to zero and it's equal to infinity if x is equal to zero, okay? And the truth is I've tried to draw it here, but you can't really draw this function. Okay. Because notice it should be uh, zero at all these points where it's clearly uh, not quite at x equals zero. Okay, we can also uh, derive a Dirac delta function in 2D or 3D, okay? That would just be more generally like this. Okay, so now our position, we're using uh, r, the position vector, to describe the coordinates of a point. Okay, and same deal, uh, if your position is right uh, at the origin, it's infinity. If it's not right at the origin, your Dirac delta function would give you zero. Okay, you can also shift it to the left or to the right. Okay, so for example, I'm gonna shift it here to the right, okay, and Bear with my drawing skills here. It'll look something like this. Okay, so now it's centered at point A. And this particular Dirac delta function would be equal to zero if x was not equal to A, but it would equal infinity if x was equal to A. Okay, so that's kind of useful. Okay, another special thing about our math tool, the Dirac delta function, is that the area under the curve here is 1. Or another way to say that, if I took the integral from infinity to negative infinity of my Dirac delta function with respect to x, I would get 1. However, it's worth noting that since this thing is zero everywhere, but at x equals zero, you just need limits.
that surround zero. So that is to say I could also do this integral with these limits here. So that was negative k. And I would still get 1. I don't really have to go all the way to infinity and back, okay, because all that integrating all the way out to infinity is just giving me 0 anyways. If this makes you uncomfortable, remember, this isn't a real thing. You're not going to catch it walking down the street. It's a math tool, okay? It's a math tool that we're going to use in order to make our math work with the physical world around us. Okay, so with this same idea in mind, I can also evaluate an integral with the shifted direct delta function. Okay, so we'll just do something kind of silly here. We're going to put limits around a point A, and we're going to shift the direct delta uh, so that it's centered at that point A, and we're going to do that integral, and it's still going to be equal to 1, uh, if I want to do it in three dimensions, then I just have to do a volume integral because this is a three-dimensional Dirac delta function, okay, which is kind of hard to actually uh, picture. Okay, but imagine a three-dimensional, think about a, a particular point in the air or in your room where all of a sudden the electric field went to infinity. We need it. Um, that would be uh, similar to the Dirac delta function. We need to integrate over all of the volume in the room, but we'd still, if we were integrating over the Dirac delta, get one. I think that's kind of cool. Okay, and then there's one more detail that we need to go over, which is really what makes it useful. I'm going to draw two different functions. One of them is going to be our shifted Dirac delta function. So that's what's going to be in green here. Maybe I'm getting a little bit better at drawing these. Okay, so this is shifted to a point uh, A. So I can describe this function as the Dirac delta evaluated at x minus A. And then there's just some other general function, okay, whatever you want. And we'll just call this f of x, okay? What I can use the Dirac delta for now is I can use this to actually pick out a point of my function, okay? So when I multiply these two together, this function times the Dirac delta, hopefully it makes sense to you that everywhere except for at A, when you multiply those two things together, you're going to get zero, okay? But you're not going to get zero right at this point, right at A. So you're kind of picking out the value of the function right at A, okay? So in other words, if I were to multiply a function, just any function, by my shifted Dirac delta, I'm going to end up getting just the function evaluated A times the Dirac delta, which is still going to be infinity, okay? This also works, of course, if I take A to 0, okay, so the more general form uh, when I don't have a shifted Dirac delta would look like this. Okay, so why is this useful for us? Well, what we're going to use is this idea of picking out a point, but we're going to take the integral uh, of this particular product of a regular function and a Dirac delta function. Okay, it's nice to take the integral Okay, because that's going to get rid of this infinity, which generally isn't very useful when we're dealing with real things. Okay, when I evaluate what's going on inside the integrand in here, I still have this same situation. This is just the function evaluated at point A. That's a constant. It no longer depends on x, so I can pull it out of the integral. And then I'm left with my Dirac delta function evaluate being integrated over x. Okay. And as long as my integration limits surround that point A, I've basically just picked out the value of my function at A, okay? This is why it's a useful math tool. And I can also do this in three dimensions. Okay, 
So I have a function that's a three-dimensional function now, and I'm going to use the three-dimensional form of my Dirac delta, and I'm going to shift it uh, by some amount just to distinguish the two coordinate systems, the amount that I'm going to shift it. I'll just use this notation here. Doesn't really matter what you use, but now it's a volume integral because I have a three-dimensional function, a three-dimensional Dirac delta. Same deal though, when I evaluate what's inside the integral, I've basically picked out the value of my function at that point that I've shifted the Dirac delta to, and then the integral of everything else is still going to be one. Okay, so I'm just going to end up with the function evaluated at R. Okay, so that's what happens when you do it in the D.